Hello, and welcome to the first episode of a new series of Geek TV. Just like the Doctor, we've regenerated. We've been let out of the dingy basement and given some extra lighting, and we've even been given some comfy chairs. We've reached the big time. Joining me, as always, is our resident Doctor Who guru and geek, Morgan Jeffrey. Say hello, Morgan. Hello. What were your first impressions of the new Doctor in the first episode? Uh, well, I thought um, Peter Capaldi actually made a really strong debut. I think uh, Jenna Coleman's really great in this episode as well. Um, the character of Clara's uh, written a little more interestingly than she's been allowed to be in the past. You know, the, um, the regeneration allows her to be uh, a little bit spikier and a little bit more uh, emotionally complicated. I thought the way the episode dealt with, you know, the new Doctor and Clara and their relationship was really interesting. But uh, the problems with Deep Breath for me were due to, you know, the, the script and, and, and pacing. I feel like the the 80 minute format, uh, for me, it, it didn't quite work. It felt like there were there were too many ideas. Uh, it was all a little bit jumbled and the pacing was off. It took a very long time for the episode to get going. Only sort of, I think, 30 odd minutes in when the Doctor and Clara meet for lunch and they're, and they're reunited and they kind of descend deep under London. Only then does the episode really kick up a gear. Maybe it's because of all this build up and this huge world told us being, but I felt like um, Capaldi has been the Doctor for a long while. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I didn't feel, didn't feel that unusual seeing him in the role. Mm. Do, how do you think he fared? How do you think he compared to, say, Tennant and Eccleston in their first episodes and Smith? All of those Doctors have made really kind of supremely confident debuts. Uh, I think it's, a, it's obviously a very you know, big role to take on, particularly when your predecessor has been so popular, which was the case for Matt Smith and, and now for Peter Capaldi. Um, so I, th I think he did really well. What I think is interesting is the way it's, it's written in that by the end of the Christmas Invasion or by the end of the 11th hour, you kind of, they, Moffat's working so hard or Russell T Davies working so hard to make sure you love this new Doctor and you completely trust this new Doctor and you definitely know it's the same guy you've always loved. Whereas with this, it's a different tact and by the end of the episode, you're not really sure who Capaldi's Doctor is and you're not really sure if, if you like him or, or trust him. There's that whole issue of did he push the villain or did he jump? And I, but I think that's the intention. I, I think it's, it's unsettling, but I think that's absolutely the intention that th this character is one that's going to be developed throughout the series. It's not as, as pat and easy as by the end of this episode, you know who this Doctor is. And we've got to talk about Matt Smith's little cameo. I'm mm. sure Tumblr is going crazy as we speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His gifts are plenty. Yeah. But um, how did you feel about his return? It felt... Um, I was a little bit surprised, you know, to bring an old Doctor in someone's a new Doctor's first episode. It, mm could have been seen as sort of undermining Peter Capaldi from yeah. the very start. The, the first time I watched it, that's exactly how I felt. I, I, I loved seeing Matt Smith again, I love his Doctor, but that's almost the problem because, as you say, just as you're starting to warm to Peter Capaldi, Matt Smith turns up again and reminds you how much you loved him and why you loved him, and it does feel like it kind of undercuts Capaldi a little bit, but I have seen Deep Breath a second time, and I think once you know the Matt Smith cameo is coming, it does work in the, the spirit it was intended, which is this kind of like handing over of, of, of the baton to Capaldi. And, and it, I think once you get over the initial emotional rush of, oh my God, it's Matt Smith, he's back in it. Once you know he's there and you know why he's there, I, I feel like the cameo does serve the purpose it was intended to. There was a bit at the end of Michelle Gomez, his uh, new character, which obviously seems to be sort of teasing the overarching arc for the series mm. by the looks of it. Where do you think this is heading with her character and generally throughout the series, what do you think is going to happen? We do know her character is is known as, or is at least being referred to as, the gatekeeper of the nether sphere, which is a classic. That is an amazing name. A classic Doctor Who name. <laughs> um, and <laughs> obviously once you've got... <laughs> Who says Doctor Who is geeky? <laughs> <laughs> and of course once you've got um, a character like that in there, particularly you know, a female villainess, people start speculating on who it might be, is it River Song, is it the Rani? But I honestly, honestly think that it is just an original character. But who that character is, we don't know. It's, it's quite interesting, at the end of Deep Breath, she says they're in heaven, and there's a lot of talk in that episode about you know, uh, salvation and, and reaching paradise. So possibly that's a theme throughout this series, that maybe mm. Capaldi's Doctor, who feels like he's not worthy of you know, forgiveness or salvation, maybe he's kind of heading to some kind of, of paradise, some kind of promised land. Do we think there's any link to the rumours that has uh, been in certain newspapers about Jenna Coleman departing the show? We can't not talk about it before we leave today, but uh, do you think perhaps that that could be the hook at the end of the series, that it could be some salvation for the Doctor in saving Jenna perhaps? Or? Possibly, yeah. I mean, yeah, as you say, there have been um, rumours of her departure, rumours that Clara might die, which I honestly don't think will happen, <laughs> because there's always these rumours, it was the same with Amy and Rory, that, oh, they're definitely going to die, same with Rose even, that like, she's going to die. 
Doctor Who companions hardly ever die, and even when they do, it's it's a cheat, and they don't really die. They get brought back, or it's you know, it's, it's a half death if that's a thing. <laughs> um, so I I wouldn't be at all surprised if Jenna Coleman does leave at the end of this series, um, and uh, that'll obviously be tied into. Capaldi's arc because uh, most companion actors they do a couple of series maybe a little less maybe a little more I think Billy Piper did two uh, Karen Gillan did about two and a half so I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, Jenna Commons on her way out and that will absolutely play into how Capaldi's Doctor develops as will presumably the introduction of a new companion as well. And should we start doing early betting on uh, who's going to replace Jenna Coleman? I, b I believe Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones mm. is, the, is the bookie's favourite but then I saw the bookie's list <laughs> and it was basically just the entire cast of Game of Thrones. Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. To one. 500 to 1. I've put a quid on that so <laughs> I will be in the money. <laughs> Helen Mirren, Miranda Hart, yeah. Idris Elba, yeah, yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. It's basically the cast of Game of Thrones <laughs> and everyone who is rumoured to play the Doctor yeah. just back in there. I think Lenny Henry's on the list. John Terry. <laughs> they're all in there. <laughs> John Terry would make a brilliant assistant. Uh, uh, one more season at Chelsea, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then, you know, and then a season of Doctor Who. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all, anyway, for today's Geek TV. Uh, we've got to go polish our sonic screwdrivers and rewatch Terror of the Autons. Uh, we'll be back next Saturday, right here with more Geek TV. So join us then.